Welcome to the session on the future of colorectal surgery, where we're going to share with you our research bringing together digital surgery with artificial intelligence in real time during operations in an operating theatre. An operating theatre is an incredibly busy place packed with sophisticated technology, all of which the surgeon as a specialist has to use to operate on a patient safely. Using fluorescence during endoscopic surgery is particularly helpful in helping us interpret and identify different types of tissues and in making decisions about where to cut and what this likely means. You can see in this video now some of the challenges that a specialist surgeon has to make in interpreting these pictures. Uh, you need to watch very carefully a whole bunch of different areas on the screen, which all of which now are going to change different colors. And we want to try and understand what these colors mean at different sites as they happen quite quickly over a few moments. It's terribly important not to be distracted, to pay great attention to the images that you're seeing, which can differ not just within the tumor, but also between patients. So what, what looks in one patient one way may look different in another way. So judging the degree with which the fluorescence is occurring requires a considerable amount of experience and expertise. And with all of the exciting advances in artificial intelligence and computer vision, it seemed natural to ask how could that technology help turn fluorescence into a really powerful clinical tool? I guess what really motivated and excited me um, when we kicked this project off is that it's really easy to define what success is, but there are so many challenges along the way to solve to get to success. Let me maybe try to sum up what I mean by success with a simple, single, big question. Um, is this cancer? As a surgeon looking at this picture, you've got to make decisions, um, profound decisions. Um, is this cancer? But it's also important that any technology we build has to be easy to interpret. We don't want to add more confusing technology to an already complex environment, because after all, the decisions a surgeon makes can have profound consequences for future recovery and for quality of life after surgery. We're able to draw on deep skills in surgery, in chemistry, mathematics, and in computer science, of course. Now, when we look through an endoscopic camera, it's hard for a non-expert like me to distinguish features. It's definitely not all nicely highlighted like you see in an anatomy textbook. And so this makes applying traditional AI te techniques challenging. AI tends to like nice regular structures, things like edges, corners, cars, or sometimes cats on the internet. Where it struggles and where it's not so good is when we've got moving, living tissue that's churning around inside a human body. So when we talked through the problem with the team, we really understood that we had to take a, a different approach here than the traditional AI classification of images approach. The main challenge is really, how do we take something that's very noisy and messy, signals coming from inside a human body, videos of human tissue, and how can we turn them into something simple enough, a simple set of numbers that we can then use to teach an AI algorithm to work with and to classify the tissue. In other words, how could we model video data coming from the camera and transform it into something that was precise and explainable, a model in other words. If we could do this, then we might be able to take all of these noisy outputs from the video camera, turn them into our models, and then use those to train AI algorithms to emulate the performance of a surgeon in distinguishing tissue types. Well, the magic happens in the middle. Maths and physics come to the rescue. Our idea is to use mathematical models to extract light intensity readings from the infrared spectrum video. We then fit these readings to these well understood models of how fluid moves in tissue. After a lot of work, some of it's there in complex mathematics on the screen, we manage to figure out how to do this in a way that AI algorithms can be trained very successfully to predict the type of tissue we are seeing. Well, I guess a demonstration is probably the simplest way to pull all of this together rather than me talking about mathematics. So here's a demonstration of the whole process using a video from a procedure that Ronan and his team performed earlier. Thanks, Paul. 
So what we're seeing here is what the surgeon sees looking inside the bowel of a patient where we see there's disease at the bottom half of the screen. And the key question is, what is this? So what I've drawn is I've marked an area in red where I think the cancer is going to be. And I've also marked in green an area of, of healthy tissue around it. And let's see what the computer processes make of this. Well, now we know the target. Um, we've got to try and figure out all the different tissue types that Ronan has indicated. And so to do that, we've selected four boxes as what we call regions of interest for our demo. I've placed boxes one and two in what we know, because we've seen Ronan's slide, to be the cancerous region. Box three is in the healthy region. Box zero is, is interesting because it's actually on the border between the cancerous and healthy regions. And so now we start to run the data extraction process to generate our biophysical features for our model. Here, you can see the computer is now reading the infrared light intensities from the bottom panel in the video, while using the top panel to track the movement of the boxes as the tissue flexes, turns, and moves. Intensity readings are just plotted against time so that we can see the characteristic curves that are coming out. It's typical of what's going on. The fluorescent dye is injected. There's an uptick as it permeates through the tissue. And then over time, natural biological processes start to drain the dye out of the tissue, what we call the washout phase. And you can see that a little bit starting to happen toward the right-hand side of the plot. There isn't much difference in real terms between those curves, for example, that we've plotted. But the computer is able to distinguish the difference in behavior using the models that we've developed. After about 40 seconds, the computer has seen enough and is ready to make a prediction. And now the results. Well, here you can see that the computer has assigned a probability score to each box, estimating what in its view is the probability that it contains tissue of each of the types that we're interested in, healthy, cancerous, or benign. Well, I'm not the expert, so Ronan, how would you interpret this result clinically? Ah, so this is really interesting. What the computer here is, is saying that there is cancer in the three areas of the green boxes. And that's to really get to that process clinically. It doesn't just need my impression of it. We have to take samples of it, go to the lab, and that takes several days to come back before we get that information. So what you're seeing here is a system that could allow that, happen, that to happen really within moments. So effectively a digital biopsy. Well, let's talk a little bit about where we go next. Um, Ronan, is, is this only applicable to this type of cancer? Oh, no, for sure. I mean, the biological processes we think are uniform to all cancers. So not just bowel cancer, but maybe other common cancers like breast cancer or lung cancer, particularly ones where there really is important decisions to make during the operation. Um, it's really important that we take out the cancer and as little healthy tissue around it as possible. So maybe having a 2D boundary map could really help get that precision right. And of course, there's applications not just looking at the primary tumor, but also in diseases where maybe the disease has spread or that maybe you're encountering something that have, brings some bit of uncertainty during the operation and you're really important for you to know for the patient, what is this disease right now? Well, that's a really good introduction to the areas that we're looking at from a technology perspective next in the research project. Um, as you saw, Ronan drew quite a complex shape when he delineated the red and green areas of healthy and cancerous tissue. And we'd very much like if the computer could do that automatically. And so what we're now doing is increasing the fine grain classification that's going on on the entire field of view. Ultimately, what we want to get to is the ability to draw a heat map of the tissue, indicating uh, precisely the regions that Ronan has drawn so that automatically, through looking at the camera, um, we can tell where the regions of cancer are, where the regions of healthy tissue are, and then better help the surgeon to plan uh, their surgery. After that, really the ambition is to try and see if we can use the same set of technologies to begin to probe the three-dimensional structure of the tissue. Because we really would like to try and understand something about what's going on in the underlying vasculature the blood vessels that are flowing through, particularly the cancerous region of the, the tissue. Ronan, you, you're uh, always talking about the future of robotics and surgery. 
Does this have an application there? Oh, for sure, Paul. So at the moment, the robot doesn't really do anything to help us make better decisions during operations. It's just a tool that the surgeon uses uh, and applies his or her own experience and expertise through. But it would be fabulous if the system could actually add some information that the surgeon can't otherwise know. So if you start to bring in uh, some smart interpretation of the appearances that we're seeing, just, just like this, uh, this AI fluorescence tool, you really can start to move towards a more uh, synergistic approach where the human and the computer both augment each other and really allow more accurate, more safe, more precise operations for patients. Wow, that's uh, quite a, an interesting vision of the surgeon of the future and how digital surgery might progress. I guess, really, we'd just like to thank everybody now for allowing us to share our exciting research project with you. It's been a pleasure to talk to everybody. And uh, from both of us, Thank you very much and goodbye. That's really cool stuff.